Good morning, folks. It's a day of wait and see here with space weather as the CME from three days ago is approaching Earth. We've got interesting stories to follow, but let's start with our star at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on the sun pretty quiet. The southern coronal hole is relatively dominating this 193 angstrom view with a long sunspot group to the north of it. This is one of the longer and thinner active regions I ever remember seeing, distending along a heliographic latitude with simple beta magnetic class for now. Yesterday morning we saw the filament eruption during the SDO eclipse. GOES-16 caught it, however, and so here's what we didn't see. Slow, twisting release, as with so many other helical CME eruptions, and that smaller remnant filament left behind shrank back down to the chromosphere. The big story in space weather right now is, of course, the CME expected to impact within the next 24 hours. Eyes on the solar wind, as it won't be scary, but could produce geomagnetic storms when it impacts here in the coming hours. Couple little fun notes here. New microwave imager on the ISS is providing epic new views of the world and showing where the water is. We always knew there was a bunch of turkeys at NASA, didn't we? And speaking of the ISS, they plan to crash it into the ocean here in about eight or nine years. You may have heard about it, but here's the official plan in today's link list, and it will be sent to Point Nemo, where over a hundred satellites have been sent down at the point in the ocean furthest from land. Wolf 359 up next. The star ahead in line towards the center of the galaxy past Barnard's star pulled a flare two years ago, about a hundred times stronger than its usual flares. We are learning about the event now and should be instantly recalling the continued outbursting on Barnard and Proxima. The stars are operating at elevated levels. And last but not least, they are so close and yet so far here. Interesting aurora at Saturn, driven largely by the atmospheric winds not just the solar wind coupling with the magnetic field of the planet. Thing is, the winds at the polar cap are exceptionally forced by solar and magnetic activity at a planet, including the cross-polar jets. It's basically what they've animated here. So for those keeping score, saying it's the magnetic field plus the upper atmospheric polar winds is like saying it's solar interaction with the magnetic field of the planet both directly and then indirectly through wind forcing. We greatly appreciate your support. Fun stories today, but the watch is for the solar wind tonight. Moderate CME due soon. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now at 6 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.